Hey, this is John Christopher, and in this video, we're going to explore the difference between device join versus device register in regards to Microsoft Azure Intra and Intune. Now, a lot of people didn't realize there's a difference, but there is actually a difference. Now, in the beginning of this video, I'm going to go through the facts with you, help you understand it. We're going to take a look at Microsoft's official documentation, and then further in, I'm going to actually demonstrate this using a virtual machine. So I hope you'll stay around and check that out. I hope you'll give me a like and a subscribe. I'm trying really hard to grow this channel. And also, be sure to check the description of this video because I do have a link that'll give you access to a coupon code that will give you discounts to all of my courses. I want to spend some time now helping you understand the concept of joining devices or registering devices into Intra ID. And this is also on top of the fact that we can also have hybrid environments as well. Now, if you go to Google or Bing and do a quick search on Microsoft Intra registered devices, you can find this article right here. Uh, of course, it also leads you to intra join devices and hybrid join devices, these three things here, which is really what I want to focus on in this video. I want to help you understand these concepts because obviously, we, you know, as we explore more about what this all is, it's, it's important to understand the definitions of all this. So we'll start with the idea of a registered device. Now, the thing you want to remember about a registered device is this is a BYOD scenario. Now, if I can't get you to remember anything else I say about this, it's going to be that key acronym, BYOD. Bring your own device. So imagine you have a employee that brings their own laptop to the office and then occasionally, you know, they use that personal laptop at home, they use it on the road, they might bring it to the office, or it could be a tablet. This could be a smartphone. This is a personal device of some kind, okay? And the company needs to allow this person to use this device and interact with resources that the company's providing in Microsoft Azure with the help of Intra ID, okay? So that is the idea. They will be registering their device, but ultimately they still have control over the device. The only difference is, is the company can put restrictions in place that limits the things that the person can do when they're interacting with the company resources. So it's not going to really put any restrictions in terms of what they can do personally with the device, but as far as things that involve the company's data, the company's resources, there will be restrictions. So the definition here, they tell you, register to Microsoft Intra ID without requiring organizational account to sign in. So when they sign into the device, they can sign in with their personal credentials, okay? Um, they don't have to have a, a business uh, account or any of that that logs them onto the device. Now, when they join Intra ID, they will still need an Intra ID account to join. But when they're logging on the device, they can have a personal uh, account. It could even be technically, it could be a local account, even though Microsoft try, is trying their best to stop you from using uh, local computer accounts. But it's a personal account. It's not a it's not their business account that logs them onto the computer. So in other words, when you walk up to this computer or this device, um, let's say it's it's a Windows client operating system, you could have um, the logon name could be anything you want that logs you in. And then when you get to your desktop, right, you're on your desktop, at that point, it could be registered to the company using the user's intra ID. But they're not going to use that intra ID to log on to the device. It's just going to use that connection with that intra ID to allow that device to interact with company resources. So primary audience, they tell you applicable to all users with the following criteria. Bring your own device or mobile devices. Uh, device ownership is the user. It could be the organizations, but that's not normally the route. Using registered devices uh, is not normally the route for an organization. An organization is usually going to want to go with a joined device, and you'll see why here in a second. The operating systems, Windows 10 or newer, here's Mac, uh, Mac OS 10.15, iOS 15 and above, Android, Linux, they mentioned Ubuntu, Red Hat. Um, provisioning, so how does this get set up? Uh, Windows 10 or newer settings, so you can go into the um, 
settings app and you can configure it there. iOS, that you can download the company portal app um, or Microsoft Authenticator app to register it. Uh, you can use Mac OS, use the company portal app, uh, Linux, Intune agent, and with device sign-in options, as far as user signing in, they can use their in user local credentials, a standard password, Windows Hello, a PIN number, biometrics, any of those personal things they normally use. Device management can use MDM, mobile device management, which is Microsoft Intune, as that's Microsoft's uh, main MDM, even though Intune is not the only mobile device management platform out there. And then it also supports MAM, mobile application management. But remember, the company is kind of limited as far as the restrictions they can place on the device because this is somebody's personal device. It's only going to put restrictions in place in terms of the user interacting with company data. Then you've got key capabilities. SSO supports... SSO for, for single sign-on to cloud resources. They don't have to keep putting credentials in. Conditional access is going to restrict what they can and can't do. This is usually done with the help of Intune. You can also have app protection policies where you put restrictions on apps that are interacting with company data. Um, so all of that. So that is the idea of a registered device. So let's talk now about the uh, intra-join device. All right. So here we are, Microsoft intra-join devices. All right. So the definition here, any organization can deploy Microsoft Interjoin device, no matter the size or industry, Microsoft Interjoin works even in hybrid environments, enable access to both cloud and on-premise resources. So the idea here, definition is joined only to Microsoft Intra ID requiring organizational account to sign in. Okay, so the, the big difference here is that when somebody walks up to the device, they're not going to be logging on with a personal account of any kind. They are going to have to have an, they're going to log in using their intra ID account. So the company generally would own this device. This would not be a personal device. The, com the company would own it and they're providing it to the user. So this is a laptop or a desktop or it could be a mobile device, you know, phone, tablet, whatever, but they are using, they're, in, they're actually authenticating with intra ID. It's not one of those things where they're logging onto a personal account and they've just got a link, um, a registered link, like with a registered device. Okay, so the ownership is usually the organization, operating systems that support it, all Windows 11 and Windows 10 devices except home. Okay, so one thing that's kind of interesting about the, uh, if you go back and look at registered devices, you don't see that, right? So Windows 10 and newer, it doesn't mention home. So you, a, a home device can be registered, but as far as a joined device goes, it's got to be, it, a, a pro edition or an education edition or an enterprise edition. It cannot be a home edition. Okay. Servers can also, they mentioned server, uh, Windows Server 2019 and newer virtual machines running in Azure. Server core isn't supported. Provisioning, this can be done by self service, meaning when you install the machine, you can choose to, if, when you're installing the machine, if you choose to sign in with an intra ID account, then it will automatically join the join the device another way is to do the and that's that of course is with out-of-box experience or through the settings you can you can do it through settings as well if you add a new account it's a windows um, intra id account to the computer then you can you can join it that way as well you can do bulk enrollment with provisioning or through autopilot there's various ways that you can do that which i'm not diving deep into those right now so device sign-in options organizational accounts using passwords passwordless Windows Hello for Business, FIDO keys, all of that. Uh, device management, you can use MDM. Um, uh, Microsoft Intune is Microsoft's MDM. It supports SSO, all of that. Okay, so the main the main benefit here, though, is that we get more control over the device. We can lock the, the device down as tight as we want, whereas with registered devices, you can't do that because a registered device is their personal device. Okay, nine times out of ten, it's going to be their personal device. All right, so that's the big difference. All right, then you've got hybrid joined. So hybrid joined device that means you've got an on-premise domain. Okay, like an on-premises Active Directory domain, and you got intra ID in the cloud, and you can with that you have this you have the ability to synchronize user accounts from the on-premise out to the cloud. So join to on-premise Microsoft Windows Server Active Directory and Microsoft Intra ID suitable for hybrid organizations with existing on-premises Microsoft Windows Server Active Directories, applicable to all users in the organization. So devices usually owned by the organization when you do that. 
Um, it's kind of the same requirements as far as that is uh, intra joined devices are. All right. So you'll see a lot of these same things. But the big thing here is, you know, you've got an on premises domain, you've got cloud, and then um, you've got synchronization going on from uh, mostly you got synchronization from user accounts out to the cloud, but you can synchronize passwords and things for those users if they change them back onto the on-premise, as well as groups and all that. All right. You just won't be able to synchronize actual user accounts down that are created in the cloud down. But again, not diving deep into that right now. All right. Well, hopefully this gives you a better understanding now of these different routes. I will tell you that Microsoft is trying to move people away from the hybrid world and go fully into intra. You may not want to hear that, and it's hard for me to even say that because I have made a living for my family in the last 25 years pushing domains and teaching domains and Active Directory, and I, I absolutely love Active Directory, but... Microsoft is definitely trying to lean more now towards going with this, these methods here. Join device, intra join devices and register devices. So just be aware of that, that they are slowly trying to move away from the domain world. All right. But hopefully that gives you a better understanding of how these three uh, are utilized and what the benefits are. Now in this video, I want to show you the concept of if you were to set up a fresh new machine this is windows 11 that i've got on my screen right here if you were to set up a fresh new machine uh and and you were going through the out of box experience which is what you're seeing right here i want to show you how this would become a uh joined device into intra id all right this is not something you need to do with me right now. I'm not asking you to set up a new Windows 11 uh, virtual machine if you want to, just so you can do this in like Hyper-V or something. You can, but it's not. Abs it's absolutely not something you have to do right now. Okay. Uh, I just want to show it to you so you can visualize it very easy. But you are welcome if you wanted to set up a new virtual machine just for the fun of it. You can, but again, you don't have to. So here we are. Uh, looking at this little virtual machine, I just threw it together real quick. If I click yes for my location, keyboard layout, that's fine. Uh, at that point, it's gonna check for updates. So we gotta let that run through. All right, and then when that's done, right here, this is where the magic happens. Now, um, in this case, if I was to put in a account ID, that is part of intra ID. If I sign in with that account, I am basically going to be uh, joining this device. All right. So you, let me show you more about what I'm saying here. If I if I jump back over to my my browser and I go to portal dot azure dot com. So now once I'm in portal dot azure dot com, if I click the menu button and I go to uh, Let's go down to Microsoft Intra ID, and I click on Users. Now, keep in mind, you won't see the same users as me. The only user that I care about right now, I have a user that is John Christopher. That's jc at examlabpractice.com. That is a user inside of Intra ID, okay? And so that is a, since that is an actual business user, it's part of our organization, okay? If we sign on with that account, then we are we are actually joining the uh, device into intra ID. Now, if I put any kind of personal account in here, you know, like John Christopher at gmail.com, which I don't actually own that Gmail account. I'm just throwing that out there. If it was something like that, that would be a personal account. Okay, at that point, this would not be joining. We could later register it, but it wouldn't be joining. Okay, I'm going to put in the JC at examlabpractice.com. That's an organization ID. All right, I'm going to put my password in. Okay. And there you go. So it's now, it's checking for authentication. Please wait while we set your device up. But this device is going to be joining Intra ID because it's part of the organization. All right. So at that point, I could finish the out of box experience and all that fun stuff and accept. And just like that, it's now going to be uh, joined 
into my environment. Okay, and now look, when I get to the actual logon screen for Windows 11, look what it says. So there it is, John Christopher, and I'm gonna go ahead and put those credentials in. Now that I'm signed in, if I click start here and then go to settings, you're going to notice that it shows who I'm signed in as. I'm signed in as JC at Exam Lab Practice. That is my um, intra ID, JC at Exam Lab Practice .com. You can also see the machine name. You'll notice that, um, that it just gave a randomized uh, name for the machine, um, which I could rename. But what I wanted to show you is remember this name. Um, just remember the last two letters, last two characters, L2 at the end, desktop dash, and then the last two being L2. If I go back over to portal.azure.com, click the menu button and go to Microsoft Intra ID, click on devices. Now keep in mind, you're not going to have the same devices as I do. I have a lot of devices because I've done a lot of different things with my uh, environment. The only device I want you to pay attention to is this one right here. There it is right there. See the L2? desktop dash and then L2, that is the device that's been joined. And notice it says Microsoft Intra Joined. All right. So hopefully that now helps you get a better understanding of this idea of um, how this device is, is joined. It was joined because I logged on with my Intra ID. This was manual joining. There are automated ways of having devices joined, which I'm not digging into in this video. But the key here is that this device is joined, all right, as opposed to just being registered. Now, in this example, I want to show you what it looks like if I have a personal device that, that wants to register as opposed to join IntraID. Now, if you look closely, uh, I'm, I'm actually on my personal laptop right now. now. You can see that I have signed in to a personal email address. You can tell because it says gmail.com on the end of it right there, even though I've got the personal email address kind of blacked out you can see this at gmail so if i click accounts and i go right over here to access work or school i have the option to connect if i click connect i can put in jc at exam lab practice.com click next and then put my credentials in now I'm not actually, I don't actually want to register this device right now, but I could if I wanted to. And at that point it would be registered as opposed to join. This would limit the control that the company would have in terms of um, this device. If, if it was a real company and I was placing restrictions, I would just be able to place restrictions on the, uh, the applications that I'm interacting with involving the data. It wouldn't actually restrict the device as much as a joined device would. All right, it does help if you uh, don't typo the password. All right, so there you go. It's now registering this device with your company and apply policy so you'll see that and just be advised that this will take some time and once it's done this device will be registered to the environment if I go back over to portal.azure.com it will eventually show up over here and it'll show up as a registered device as opposed to a joined device so hopefully you now have a better understanding of the concepts between uh, the idea of a joined device versus a registered device. <music>